Ours, this is Razzle Dazzle. I was going to say, that was a perfect clip for our commercial when he did the, the raspberry thing. Do that, do that again, yeah. but pick the right one. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> one's incredible. <laughs> it's like an explosion of raspberries in your mouth. <laughs> That's Razzle Dazzle. That's uh, our, our raspberry sour. It's literally like eating a yeah. handful of raspberries. It is, right? It is. And it will get wow. you drunk. You can get drunk from eating raspberries? <laughs> <laughs>
that was only that was just a small a small <laughs> price to pay for the big <laughs> picture. So thanks for taking that one for the team, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you got away with it too. I, mean, I did. Yeah. 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 You clean up well. Yeah. It was a little weird. I, I wasn't really used to free balling all day, but you know, for the rest <laughs> of the day there. But you know, that was okay. Did yeah. you know this happened? <laughs> I, you know, I vaguely remember it. I mean, I've, I I remember him telling the story, but I didn't. I've heard the story about when he sharded and had to check the underwear or whatever, but I didn't realize it was. It was it's all coming back now, but yeah, because yeah. I remember. So I remember, like, was it was it the first night we went out with Atlantic, when they had the limousine and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so that night, they they knew that we were going to go see Electra the next day. Mm -hmm. And this is Kevin Williamson mm -hmm. that was the L.A. A&R guy who took us to meet with Craig Kalman in New York. Yep. And so he was like, and he kind of like, you know, he knew that like when it came to like the guy who's going to be able to party with the band that like there was no one at Electra that could hang with him. Mm -hmm. So he knew he was going to like, he's like, I'm going to show these dudes what's up. So he had yeah. a, it was like, you feel like it was part of a strategy to having you guys the first night. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had it set up so that they had us for the first night and the third night. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was for sure a strategy. Yeah. And I think that Electra kind of knew that they, they weren't going to be able to battle them. Right. Because mostly because they had just done the Sugar Ray records and the Kid Rock record mm -hmm. stuff. So, like, so you know there was that those things were in our genre and they were both of those bands at that time were kind of very unique even in their own genres whatever but all the producers that were like working with sugar ray was what was interesting to us like david Kahn and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i don't remember who else did those but and and uh and kevin signed sugar ray that was his band and then david i mean and then uh flom jason flom had signed kid rock and it ultimately, it would have been better if we would have been able to get in with lava or whatever, but that just didn't happen for us. But yeah, uh, but yeah so they they had a stretch limousine in Manhattan. They put us in the Royalton. Remember the hotel? Mm -hmm. Jeff and me were sharing a room. Um, yeah, we went. We went to. We just were going so hard, and then we went to this bar, and it was like the bars in New York close at like four. Yeah. And um, and Some we were in. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <it's like laughs> And this one in particular, like they were like, oh, you have to close at four, but they just like they kicked everyone out except all the girls <laughs> and us. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, like they just kicked all the dudes out, <laughs> and they just kept it going. Mm. And um, you know, because like you know, they had the Atlantic, you they, know, they've done gold card. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So um, it was like we're like, oh yeah, this is this is what it's all about, and yeah, that was a pretty crazy. Night. So f how could you not have sharded yourself yeah. after that? Like, yeah could have been worse maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it could have been worse yeah but that was definitely i understood the phrase you know never trust a fart after that <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's where that comes from that's oh, we man. have to add that to the tool segment yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a tool, <laughs> uh, that sure. is a tool. kevin williamson was a w was a, a party mentor <laughs> <laughs> he, he definitely could you know he went, yeah. he went hard yeah i don't think there was that that was kind of Apart from his sort of claim to fame of, of working Sugar Ray, um, which the label thought was the closest thing, you know, that could get them to kind of speak our, our language or whatever. Um, that was sort of their vision for us. It wasn't really, our, you know, right. our vision. We, we saw a little overlap, but it wasn't like we didn't want to, we had no interest in being them. But, um, but he definitely was the most kind of like, out of A and R guys that had a significant voice at, at labels, mm -hmm. like um, definitely one of the most down to earth, like hang out with the guys kind of kind of dude. Yeah. yeah, his his name is Yo Dude. Yeah, really, <laughs> Yo Dude. <laughs> Maybe he answered the phone, Yo Dude. So everybody calls him Yo Dude. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I've I've he's in Nashville now, I believe with Interscope, and um, so I've told he comes back to LA often. So I. Shout out Kevin Williamson. Next yeah. time he's in town, he's gonna come come be on the podcast with us for sure. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he had like he had also signed Jewel. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Yeah. So That's he cool. was a baller. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he, Jewel, basically that that record like just took care of that dude for life, basically, and the Sugar Ray stuff. So. We uh, you remember we actually spent 
New Year's Eve 1999, the turn of the century. Oh, that's at, right. At in this Kevin house. Williamson's yeah. house. He had this baller ass house in the Hollywood Hills, like yeah. just view of the whole. Yeah, just. Yeah, yeah he was a baller. We were like or waiting for ball. the whole city to shut down right. and everything. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Uh, Y2K was coming. Yeah. I remember listening to the radio, just waiting. Yeah. It's, it's yep. going to go down. It's going yeah. down. Yeah. That's interesting. Like, Zinger brought it up in, in the early days. Like, I mean, that guy had a vision because in the earlier days, there wasn't. I mean, they're trying to put you guys to Sugar Ray, but now you guys make so much more sense with the current music, reggae, rock, hip hop. Yeah, there's so many of those bands now, yeah. and you guys are at the very front of that movement, yeah. part of that movement. I think it's really yeah. interesting. The f- I see all these festivals now of all these, you know, of that genre. And you guys mentioned you tell me more, but like, it seems like when you guys were doing different festivals and stuff, you kind of were the odd kind of guys out. It was either too yeah. rock or it was too reggae or mm-hmm. it was too hip hop or, um, yeah, for sure. But not anymore. Yeah, I mean before, before our record came out, there was really. 311 sublime you know there was no doubt there was sugar ray mm, yeah Beastie yeah Boys, there was there was you know, you, right. you got into something that was yeah. kind of you know things started getting real different i mean no, we don't sound like any of those bands but those bands kind of if we played with those bands it kind of made sense right it was the right know. genre mix yeah. Yeah. right yeah cuz there was the ska movement mm-hmm. in in america mm-hmm. And then Sublime was really kind of, Sublime and No Doubt, kind of the only ones that were in that that evolved into something different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then 311 obviously kind of came around there, but they were kind of more on the, you know, almost on the forefront of like almost more metal, mm-hmm. I guess. But more um, rap metal. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so w- we were trying to kind of more more pick up where Sublime left off than than anything else um and i think when we started doing it we thought there was going to be more of it at that time but like the limp biscuit corn thing mm-hmm. was and papa roach and all that was popping at that time too so and like we were we kind of were like we obviously grew up on metal as well but we were kind of like i think this metal thing it, you know i mean it's how long ago did it was like 1960 what when sabbath <laughs> started and right. now it's, you know like is this going to keep going like mm-hmm. um uh, but yeah, yeah. I never wanted to get into the the metal hip hop thing so much. You yeah. know, I felt like the Anthrax Public Enemy killed it yeah. with Bring the Noise. <laughs> I was like, they got it already. <laughs> right. yeah. I don't know how much better it's gonna get than that right. already. And um, you know, more like uh, s- you know, to me, like this Sublime and the way they were doing the reggae, you know, more reggae thing and when they got aggressive it was way more punk rock like operation ivy yeah. punk rock elements more and and beastie boys you know we had two singers so like the back and forth mm-hmm. element of trading off like you know I, I i saw more like a sublime type band fronted by the beastie boys with like a with like a bigger production quality right kind of thing was i thought where we were you know what we were kind of aiming for And there was definitely nothing like that. But the Atlantic, when we tried to explain that to them, they were like, oh, that's like Sugar Ray. (laughs) (laughs) We're like, yeah, not really, but (laughs) right, uh, whatever. But, you know, it's not. People always want to put you in a box. Yeah. 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 Yeah, We didn't understand the importance of that then either. Like it's because we were trying to get outside of the box. Mm -hmm. But it like when you're trying to get played on the radio, you you have to fit into some box, or they or they they just don't understand, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but another thing too that was like had an influence on, you know, intellectually, or, you know, how we were thinking about the process of making music at that time was that, um, um, like when I was at Island, when Jeff and I met, when I was working at Island, and he was you know playing in a hundred different bands in Hollywood. Uh, um one of the things like when I went in there and I was I became a scout and I was I asked my boss I was like what are we looking for like what what a, what am I allowed to bring in for us to sign and she was like and this is Chris Blackwell's record label who signed Bob Marley and 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 basically brought you know reggae to England and then to the, you know to the rest of the world or whatever and he was his his thing was we can sign anything but white reggae 
<laughs> that was a quote from him. <laughs> Anything but white reggae. So I was like, oh, okay, this guy is like, you know, this guy is the, the godfather of, of reggae as far as record labels are concerned, right? Like he signed Bob Marley, who's the, you know, the OG of the whole thing. Um, so I was like, okay, so doing, you know, we're white. We, doing reggae is off limits, you know? <laughs> um, so we started doing it and, it. and then when Sublime did what they did, it was so clever how they influenced reggae. Um, and then, and then also it went back to like, like we said, like, like, like the police in the beginning, they were a white reggae band mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. you know, that's what they were doing. Like the record was called Regatta de Blanc, like it means white reggae. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and Stuart Copeland's one of the greatest reggae drummers of all time. Um, but like, um, but it was you know, again, it was like cleverly disguised. Also, The Clash was super heavily influenced by reggae. Mm -hmm. um, Elvis Costello, all those guys were over that, that was, um, so we're like, yeah, so we have to do this, this clever disguise of how we, inf you know, put that as an influence, but we wanted it to be a heavy, heavy influence. Um, and then whereas now, like, it's, it, it because that, I don't know what's it, if it's uh, what's the word, but like you know, now that that, that rule has been broken mm -hmm. and it's okay, obviously that's why there's so much. Because if you just you know, it's like if you want to just copy a genre, it's really easy. Right. Like if you just go in and just copy, right? There's so much great reggae you can start copying it, yeah. and it's much easier than having to do all of the the hoops that we had to jump through to yeah. like be clever about sneaking being it in. a reggae <laughs> band, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But you know but acknowledging that like we don't want to um, appropriate the genre, yeah. you know, which was like sacred to the Jamaicans, you know? Mm. Right. It was funny, like we, p we kept getting told we were like too reggae by the label or whatever. Mm. But then, you know, remember we played that uh, reggae festival. Hey um, guys. Let's drink some beer. In, uh, on the Queen Mary. Thank you. Yeah. And it was like legitimately all reggae bands, and all of a sudden we were like, we're not reggae at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> we're nowhere close to a reggae band. Uh, same thing would happen with oh like yeah. a, a metal show or something. We'd play, you know, we'd think we were, you know, this is our heavy, all our heavy songs, yeah. whatever. And then uh, Thank we'd you. play with on a bill with a bunch of heavy bands. We're like, oh, never mind. We're not that. Right. <laughs> She was like, I'm just going to throw this. Down. I think that was the other one for Jeff. Geoff. G. Thank you. I, I see what they did here, yeah. I think. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think this is a more of a game for you and I than <laughs> it is okay, for the guest. Yeah, so. Um, sorry, did you finish with that? Uh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got distracted when the beer was coming in. Yeah. So we're comparing this one to this one. Is what we're doing. Do you remember? Did we do? We, did we uh, do this last time? I don't, I don't know think if we, we did, did the beer no. game with you. Because we were doing no. the show that day. So have you like seen the beer game? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. One is from here, and one is not from here. One That's is right. a guest. Yes. And they're they are they're all mixed all together, but we're like this okay. one is compared to that one. You can see the the color match basically. Mm -hmm. so should we start with the T's? Yeah. So you start with the top. Yeah, the top left one. Wait, let's make sure that his are in the same order. Oh yeah, yeah good they call. Are, they are. And, and yours are. Yep. You good. do get the pink slip to my vehicle if you win this. It's been a, a running. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you get Josh's car if you win it's this. It's a 1984 and, and Jetta. The same as. Uh, yeah, you are. I think. Yeah. This one's darker than this oh, one, yeah. right? I'm the. This one, yeah, I'm certain. I feel like this one is that the one that you yeah. keyed in on. You are right. I You're right. Yours are switched. So, um, wait. Yeah. Wait. Or the dark is on the right. Check this one out. Doesn't this one look the same color as yours? There. Yeah. Yeah. These are the same. So if I went. No. No. Our, these are the same. Yeah. yeah. So we have to switch one of these. No. 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 Yeah. You're good. Okay. Mine You're good now, now too. Now I'm good. Yep. Oh, I, s I see it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't see it backwards. Okay. All okay. right. So the two. So I, I, I think. I think Jeff gets a point for that. Uh, yeah, that, he definitely gets one point. Ding, ding, he ding, gets ding, an ding. extra point for that. That yeah. was very <laughs> observant. 
Um, so these first two are IPAs. Um, and these are going to be, um, yeah, these are going to be high ABU. Like these ones are, are bitter. But okay. there's but there's no whiskey. There's no whiskey. <laughs> <in> yeah, <here>. no <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> Don't worry, I brought you extra pair of underwear. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, thank you. See if you can identify mm. the Tarantula Hill beer. Those are both pretty close. Yeah. Interesting. I'd mm. Do a double, double sip. Mm. I'll be honest. I wouldn't be able to tell you if I didn't look at the card. Interesting. I think I, I think I know, but I, I'm yeah. curious to see if I'm right. Okay. What do you think, Jeff? I'm gonna say that's Torrential Hill. That is correct. That's what I was thinking too. Oh shit! I should have let you guess. No, first. no, that, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was. I mean, I'm gonna find out either way. Yeah. So that's Day Trek. That is the collab beer we did with Beechwood. Um, it's out in distribution right now. It's an amazing beer. This and one tasted a little, like more, um, like buddy, <laughs> like uh, st- oh, I don't know what you used to word. Stank. Stank. More dank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more dank. More than, skunky. Than I've ever had a tarantula beer beer gotcha taste yep. is that right yeah that would be right yeah and yeah exactly even this one is more dank than we normally do because um, we did it with beechwood and that's that's you know more like they're like a traditional west coast hmm. typically this one is called slap and tickle <laughs> how can you go wrong mm. from brewery <laughs> x uh in anaheim they're <laughs> awesome guys uh we're about to do a collab with them uh josh remember what that one's called in uh, it's inhale oh. x hill. Oh yeah, in inhale x hill x brewery x mm-hmm. and the hill. Oh, got it. Yep. Well, they're very clever with their names. They are slap and tickle. That's a pretty, that's <laughs> a good one. Yeah, they are they are clever and they do they do amazing stuff. They do um, yeah, they're great. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next one. All right, hitting the H's. Dank. That's the word. I was looking for. We're doing another collab coming up called Danker Man. It's like, going to be like Anchorman. Like Anchorman, <laughs> and the art is like kind of like a play on the Anchorman. That's a four four way collab. Uh, version, artifacts, artifacts, and Craft Coast and Craft Coast. And us. Awesome. Danker Man. That was gonna be rad. Okay, here we go. Again, to uh, th- this one for us, the one that's ours is also uh, pretty unique. This is one Dante just did. What you got, Jeff? This guy. The left one? Yeah. That is incorrect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a. This is Pizza Port, the Chronic, hmm. and this is uh, Tranchel Hill Red Widow. Hmm. It's a red ale. Man, it's all right, man. It's all right. Hang in, Hang in there. Hang in there. Can't win them all. Damn it. Not Sorry. anymore. What's that? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now that I lost one, <laughs> I can't win them all. We could edit it out. Yeah. But, um, you I don't have to pay Josh. I meant this one. <laughs> you did you did mm. move them you know in yeah. out of that's order there and I was like me. I was like yeah, what are we doing here mm-hmm. okay cool all right let's do these two okay whoa that's intense I'll taste that again mm-hmm I think I mm. 
like one, you want some ice cream. This one's tough for me because I don't I don't normally go this dark. This, um, I think, yeah, I think they're both black IPAs. This is definitely a black IPA, and I think this is a black IPA. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that guy's. Damn, Jeff, two in a row. John, John gave you kind of a hint too. I did give you a hint. Cal, <laughs> this is uh, I'm not sure what Doom Black is. This is modern times Doom Black. I think it's a black IPA. I'm not sure. I like it. That's really good. This yeah. is Cali Nights, which is the dark sister of Cali Day. This is a black IPA. <laughs> that didn't come out right. <laughs> I thought this was one of the what that really strong kind of desserty, yeah. or I don't know, you call it dessert, but the one that we poured over ice cream before. What was that? I think that was a stout. That was a stout, oh, that was or stout. maybe even a coffee stout. porter. I'm off stout. tonight. I'm, yeah. off, I'm off my game tonight. Let it all out. These are the <laughs> beers that we talk <laughs> about. Come, come on. on. I'm drinking with you. So come on. Okay, Drink so these on. are these Drink are sours. <laughs> these that, are sours. That I'm song just, needs to happen. Yeah. I think we should do a drink on though, maybe. Instead of come on. Drink on. <laughs> I'm drinking with you. Okay, so yeah, these are both sour. Just warning you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, that was the warning. Wake up! <laughs> yeah, you did warn. Hmm. Hmm. Those Whoa. definitely wake you up. Yeah. All right. It's like a raspberry you like like <laughs> explosion in your <laughs> mouth. All right. It you is. could come out even on this one. That's Keep fresh off the vine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Vine to glass. Oh, man. This, is, this one's tough. Yeah. Well, John's actually, the last two were tough. <laughs> <laughs> John's eyes are hinting over there. I see that. I didn't wow. mean to. I wow. didn't mean Josh it away, is so, why is Josh so rough on you, man? <laughs> <laughs> we're just playing a game, Josh. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep the playing field even over here. Well, My I'm car is at stake. <laughs> Come on. Well, <laughs> I'll say that's three inches of the hill. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just gonna say I didn't want to say it, but like that was the per this is ours. This is razzle dazzle. I was gonna say that was a perfect clip for our commercial when he did the the raspberry thing. Yep. Do that again, yeah. but pick the right one. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> one's incredible. <laughs> it's like an explosion of raspberries in your mouth. <laughs> That's razzle dazzle. That's uh, our our raspberry sour. It's literally like eating a yeah. handful of raspberries. It is right. It is. And it will get wow. you drunk. You can get drunk from eating raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> Special raspberries. No, that's really tasty. Yeah, it is. Yeah. These are both good. This one is. Uh, sorry, I didn't even mention that. What this one was. Uh, Trip the light. Uh, it's a it's a stereo brewing. It's um an imperial so imperial sour. You know when it's this color, it makes you feel like you're really drinking something healthy. I know, right? <laughs> right? It's like, man, I need a yeah. shot of one of these. This one I go is for an, a run. an imperial sour, so this one will get you really drunk. I, I don't know what the what's imperial. ABV. Is that up? Imperial means has a higher ABV. It's more alcohol, so there's more alcohol in this one. That one, but you don't taste it. I mean, it doesn't no. taste like. I don't know what it is, but the raspberry yeah. flavor is insane. That's really good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, just for the record, when you yours were switched backwards, right? Yep. That's you, why. If I you wouldn't have, if you wouldn't yeah. have done that, you would have been three, three and one. one. Three and one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, for being so honest, <laughs> I think I, I think I, I think still ended up fifty-fifty because I got one bonus point. That's right. The bonus at the point for, at the beginning. Yeah. 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 Extra credit. Yeah. That is true. Yep. 
Do you guys want uh, like a, a another beer, like a regular beer, or like a? I got some. I think. Or I do you want to keep sipping on I'll these? I'll just sip on these. Okay. Yeah, I could just sip on these. Okay. Do you want do you want a beer, Josh? Do we still have light? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a light. Mm. All right. Okay. Um, so, where were we? So, we never got a half pipe. That's right. Tell tell that story. Yeah. Tell your version of that. I want to make sure that my version was accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think your version was pretty pretty accurate. Yeah. From uh, from what I remember, I mean, he was um. He was definitely uh, definitely had a hard time understanding that there was somewhere further than the valley yeah. <laughs> that people <laughs> actually lived in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Southern California, um, but uh, he was. I remember. I don't remember. Did you did you talk about you hugged him? I did. Yeah. I did say that. Yeah. Because uh, that that was a surprise to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he got that very often. You know, another thing I left out of the story, too, that that I, I didn't really paint the picture for, like, so, like, so this was the, they were a part of Time Warner, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it wasn't Time, well, it wasn't it was Time oh. Warner yet. Yeah, I think it was. It was WIA. It was Warner it was Electra Wea. Atlantic. Yeah. And they were in the Time Warner building. What? Well, maybe it wasn't Time Warner. I just think the they Warner merged building. with Time Warner after, after we okay. signed. So they were just in yeah. the Warner building. Yeah. Um, and Atlantic had the penthouse. They had actually, I think, probably the top two stories of the building. Yeah. And um, so all the offices were on the on the whatever the 40th floor. And then yeah. when we went to go meet him, we went to the 41st floor. And that's my visual. I have this visual of you because you mentioned like walking for like a yeah, city okay, block. Yeah, okay, so I did talk about that? Yeah, and that's, okay. that's I picture this yeah. like huge space mm-hmm. and you guys just walking, walking slowly yeah. to this desk. Yes. And I think you said there's maybe like a couch or something, something there else. There's a couch with a table and there's two yeah. couches and a table yeah. about 20 yards in front of his desk. <laughs> right, yeah. that's, that's the visual that yeah. I have. And we that walked. You did say that. We walked like. Yeah. 200 <laughs> yards <Yeah>. and <laughs> to <laughs> get to the couch it reminds where me we of, met. <laughs> yeah. It Pretty reminds much. me of like when you chef. Uh, call in the chef. It reminds me of like when you're on camera and you're walking and you start to walk awkward. I'd feel like <laughs> yeah. I'd forget how to walk if yeah. I had to walk that cl- that far to yes. someone that's so super important. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was far. It was that was probably the biggest office I've ever been in. Yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> especially I mean, I mean, in Manhattan. Yeah. That might be the biggest office in Manhattan. At yeah. yeah, it was huge. I mean, yeah, it was like the square footage, like the rent for that office was like a hundred grand a month, you know, or something. Yeah. But also, <laughs> it was also, like the movie Big. Yeah. Where you walk in and you're just like, someone has this? Like, <laughs> right. no way. Yeah. No. Let me get uh, real quick, Chef. What do we got? What do we got, Chef? Tomato bruschetta. Fresh garlic, fresh fresh basil, sea salt. Mm. Asada fries. Mozzarella. Beer cheese sauce. Mm. Pickled srirachas. Asada, asada, asada. And uh, on our adobo fries. Nachos with beans, the beer sauce, pickled jalapenos, on homemade tortilla chips. Whew. Awesome. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to grab one of these? Sure. Dig into some of those fries, Chef. This looks For amazing. Sure. This is this is uh, this is a stuff um, that used to be on the happy hour menu, and now it's part of the main menu. Is that right? I thought you were going to say, this is the stuff that dreams are made of. <laughs> hey, John, this is the stuff um, that dreams are made out of, right? Oh, yeah. That's yes. Yeah, this was all, 
like you said, on the happy hour. And now it's available all day. Well, you know, why have a happy hour when you could have a happy day? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right, yeah, so where were we? We were still talking about the, uh, we were still talking about the, the Atlantic thing. But let's move on, unless there's anything else you wanted to add to that. No, after I got my shark story out, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I, feel, I feel much lighter. Yeah. I will say one other thing that was about that particular day that uh, was a super valuable lesson that I learned, or, you know, something that, like, oh, damn, I've seen a little kid just fall right out of a big chair. <laughs> um, <coughs> something that, like, stuck with me was uh, before we got to his office, when we went to that top floor, we went through, like, a maze of offices and it was basically like it was all his staff and then we got to the last office and there were like small offices it was like it was like little office little office we like kind of going through the offices and then we got to the last one and it was just like a an open area with just a desk in front of a big crazy wooden door and there was a woman there and she was like the last layer of defense mm -hmm. before you got to him. Mm -hmm. And like you could just tell when you got to her, like this is the person that runs this whole company. Right. right. Yeah. She's the, she was like his chief of staff or whatever, or, you know, his executive assistant or whatever. And like she was just the boss bitch. Yep. Like you could just tell. And it was like, okay, yep, you guys are good. She let us in. And then the door opened. It was like, <laughs> like, yeah. like I said, five football fields away you see this tiny little old man sitting down there at the desk <laughs> I think he's down binoculars there. Yeah. Oh, there he is <laughs> yeah um, but that was something that always stuck with me I was like you know yeah he, he was, was he was groomed immaculately yes he was yeah 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 he probably gets like groomed daily kind of yeah. thing yeah the he barber comes man. in yeah yeah it was funny uh, after we um, after we talked about him the other day I went and like googled him up just to like refresh and like he was he was a Turkish guy mm. and uh, him and his brother were like kind of the co-founders and some one other guy and he um, he wrote some banger hits back in the day yeah you know, like R&B hits you know uh, before they even started the label um, I thought he was a jazz guy he was jazz mm -hmm. and then he went into like R&B and he wrote R&B like he wrote like R&B like I can't remember what it was. But like, there's like <coughs> three very significant ones that are, that are like, you know, number one hits, like for like, you know, the Supremes or something. I can't remember yeah. what it was, but our first album, the CD, was like a tribute to to Atlantic. The the actual CD, was yeah, like their right. their color scheme, their whole mm -hmm. little the red and green, yeah. like their original what would have been on the center of the vinyls. Yeah, that was our CD cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then well, not the not the booklet, but the actual CD. Right, right. Yeah. So, anyways, for let's anyone that remembers those, yeah. CDs. Yeah. Whoa, what is, what is the CD? <laughs> Remember the CDs used to come in those big. Oh yes, exactly things? the big box. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the big box, just to make them harder to steal. Is that the reason? Yeah. Because the regular you could CD, you could like pants. yeah, stick it down your pants and you're out of there. But like, but then they eventually long, shift shifted those to the down CD, to. Yeah. They I mean, did that with the cassettes, cassettes too. Yeah. Oh, the cassettes That's had the right. big plastic uh -huh. thing connected yeah. to it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember like Sam Goody. They had like he like flipped through the whole. And also too, I think it was partially because like in the retail, or whatever. I was like, you know, we we're used to sh like flipping through vinyls. Mm -hmm. You know, and they still wanted to have that experience of like going in there and flipping through. You oh, know? interesting. Yeah. I forgot about that big plastic thing they attached. That there's probably some key to it to open it yeah. up. Yeah. For the cassettes, it, it didn't work for a theft deterrent. There was like a. There was a Kmart near where I grew up that I could skate up to, and you could go grab, I'd grab like two or three cassettes, and then walk out to the uh, the garden section, was oh. kind of oh, yeah. like Home Depot, right, yeah, yeah. where it's like outside and enclosed by a chain link fence, so I could walk out and walk through there and then kind of slide them under the fence, <laughs> and then I could leave the store with nothing in my hands, so just do 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 do, yeah. and then. And then go around to the back of the building and grab them smack them and oh wow and run off i got i got a lot of cassettes that way yeah so it's hard for me to 
It's dedication to the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hard for me to blame the like, other kids that stole all the music. Did you have to bust exactly. those <laughs> plastic things off then? Yeah, but I could do it at home. It was no big deal. Right, had all the time in the world. Um. Yeah, let's. Uh, what other uh, What other good uh, stories do we have? Like. Uh, uh, tour stories. Yeah, Jeff was asking about the um, about on tour, right? With uh, oh yeah, with with the the rock reggae revolution yes. that that happened yeah. post our signing. Yep. Um, with I mean a lot like a lot of bands, slightly stupid. I mean I know they were a, already a band, but like they right. they really exploded in the years yep. following. Yep. Um, not saying we got signed and then they blew up, but the, um, they they got that revolution happened popular. after you guys. I mean, yeah, that, that's history. yeah. They were definitely around when we were doing our thing, but they were definitely more sort of underground. Yeah, that it was point. an underground thing. Yeah, and then they kind of just bubbled and bubbled and bubbled, and then you know, did yeah. it more sort of <coughs> grassroots than we were, like with radio and stuff. Yeah, and Pepper. Yeah. Kind of, you Pepper know, Pepper definitely had some radio. Yeah, we're a little play. more radio on, friendly yeah. from from the jump. Yeah. But did a lot to run. We we toured with both of them. Okay. A bunch. Expendables. Mm hmm Uh remember we did the first the t first time Revolution ever toured? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's <They> that? <laughs> Revolution, which is oh. like they're huge now. Yeah, Revolution, yeah. Um yeah. they uh, their very first tour, like they were the greenest of green. They had like an R V and mm -hmm. uh their tour manager was like the bass player's college baseball buddy or yeah. something. Seems and like right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd like never been on the road before. They'd never been on the road. And they were just struggling, you know? And they were like, you know, they... they In what way? Like, like what's it, that The like? road is fucking hard. It's brutal. Like, you, and like... Paint me a picture of the road. Oh. You f you, the one thing about it says, like, you, you leave your house with your fucking bag, you clock in... And you don't clock out till you get back, mm -hmm. you know, two months later, whatever it is. So, it's definitely a different deal if you're on a bus, because if you're on a bus, there's a bus driver, and the only thing you really need, and there's probably enough crew to be dealing with most of your equipment and everything, and really the only thing that you really need to deal with is getting on the bus before it leaves. Like that's. If you can pull that one off, everything else will work out, which even yeah. <laughs> that isn't always easy. Exactly. But um, I've seen you pack gear before. You let other people do that stuff for you back then? Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, when you have a, a road crew with you, you kind of get in that groove. Yeah, you get in a groove with them. They're, they're, I mean, they're like kind of become part of the family. I've never seen someone do. Uh, you're like a. J was a Jenga or uh, no, Tetris? A Tetris Jeff master. Jeff is a Tetris master. Like yes. a Tetris mm. master. Like you can't get that in the back of your truck. What are you doing? Yeah. Mm. Holy crap! Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> when when we started, we were Atlantic. You know, we had like the, the thing that we learned with Atlantic right, was there was everything was like an. They would tell you there was a budget, but it was basically an unlimited budget. The first tour we did, they put us out on a in a van just to like because mm -hmm. we'd never toured. You know, so they're like, oh, we're gonna have these guys in a van. So we were in a 12-passenger van, and we had 12 people in the van. <laughs> Which is the concept, like, and later on when you became veterans in the game or whatever, like. That was, that had been rough. It was brutal. <laughs> like, it would be, like, we would, like, later on, if we were going to be in a van, it would be, like, just the van. Like, we'll figure, we would do everything else just so we had space <laughs> in the van. <laughs> so we would have never. Does that mean one of you were driving then, too? In. The van? When, when it was, oh, yeah. if we were in a van later, for sure, yeah. Oh yeah, wow. yeah, we would just drive. We would tour manage ourselves. Jeff had been a tour manager for years prior to all this stuff, too. So he had, you know, and then we learned, obviously, you become like a vet or whatever. But, like, yeah, but we're in, a, we're in the van. And Pete Stahl was our tour manager. He yeah. drove most of the time with, with Pete. Um, he just texted me the other day. He texted me as well. Yeah, he's out yeah. with uh, Rival Sons exactly. right now. Yeah, shout out to Pete Stahl, yeah. legend. I, I texted him back and asked him if he would come be on the podcast, and he hasn't responded yet. Oh yeah, yeah, he would be so amazing to have mm -hmm. on here. We could we could tell 
Pete Saul stories for oh, holy for shit. days. Like, Did you notice he looks exactly the exactly fucking the same, same when he sent you that picture? Yeah, he must have. He he's into the witch's blood or something. Like, <laughs> it is unbelievable. Yeah. I didn't believe him when he told me how old he was then, twenty years exactly. ago. Yeah, he looks exactly the fucking same. Yes, he's a legend, and um, and um, and he's in the cabal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. He's not. But yeah, so that was our first experience. And then like we, we that was the tour we did with Good Charlotte. It was Good Charlotte, mm-hmm. OPM, Eve 6. Yeah. Mm. Good Charlotte were opening <laughs> for us. For us. Yeah. <laughs> this was when they, for, that was their first tour as well. Yeah, that's right. So we were all green at that point, except for Eve 6. Um, and then, uh, and then after that tour ended, they asked us to do a tour with, uh, Cherry Poppin' Cherry Daddies. Cherry Poppin' Daddies. That's right. Oh, and we were like, those. hell no. And they're like, yep. got to do it. It's like they had done some deal with the other label, and they da 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 like, got to do it. They kept telling us, they're a warp Tour band. Yeah, yeah. It'll be great. It'll yeah. be great. They're a warp Tour band. We were like, uh. And we were, so we were like, okay, if you guys are going to make us do this, we're ready to upgrade to the bus. <laughs> so they got they sent us a bus. And then 12 you people. You guys on, negotiated. Yeah. 12 people on the bus was you know that that works because then now you have everybody has their own bunk mm. and then you know and then you have a full like a full crew oh the bus is, was like luxury yeah that was that and was it was incredible. like kind of a shitty bus that first yeah. bus I suppose was, you have no alone time huh that, like, that no, bunk is that's what I'm saying you clock in and you're you're, you're at work but that bunk would give you that at least I'm by myself like, yeah you get to close, you the close curtain. a curtain which is not, you know, like people walk by and like still like, you know, can punch you in the face through the curtain or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's that, a that bus was uh, was the blind melon bus. Oh, yeah. That remember, I, I picked my bunk and then uh, Al Function was with us there and Al showed up and he's like, hey, this was the old blind melon bus. And we were like, oh, really? And goes yeah that bunk which is the one i picked it's like that's the bunk that shannon hoon died in <laughs> and i was what? like what oh <laughs> no that's, way you think yeah. he's just messing with you no we're just serious <laughs> i was like wow okay brutal i survived yeah it tells you shannon hoon <laughs> that fight the first fight start now i got freaking blind melon Probably in my in a head few minutes. and it will yeah. not okay, leave cool. me for hours it. yeah yeah i got that freaking song in my head now yeah we also had um, a bus in uh, in Europe. Remember that that was Motorhead's old bus that we tore it apart. We couldn't find any speed, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it was if that makes it if that confirms it was yeah. his bus because <laughs> they did all of it, or right. if, or if some would have fallen out of their pocket somewhere. I don't know. But I was also going to say, like you know, like I said, you clock in, but um, you basically spend you know, 23 hours of every day traveling, you know, in, in the sense of like either actually moving or getting to a hotel or getting to, you know, like, you know, it's just work, 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 travel, travel, work, 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 work and then you get an hour on stage, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like the only part of it that's actually, you know, I don't know, I guess, I mean, the whole thing, you know, the whole thing is fun, but, um, but it's just a lot of work. I think people's vision uh, or their idea of like touring that it's this glamorous, you know, this is fun thing, but it's, it's not, it's like, it's really tough. So you really, it takes a certain type of person, I think to be ready to be, uh, ready to give up like really any alone time. Yeah. Um, comforts of home gone. Yeah. Like no matter how hard you try and how much, you know, even if you have a lot of money. Yeah. Rule number one on any tour bus is no number two. On so the bus. Yeah, on the bus. So Not just in general. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, two yeah. months, no number two. <laughs> Damn. That's really <laughs> just on the bus. In. <laughs> so there's like, you start scheduling your whole life around like, when am I going to be able to take a dump actually? Like, yeah. when can I do laundry? Like things that are so easily taken for granted when right. you live at home. Um, when you're at home that all of a sudden you're like this is this is a thing I really have to work this out um, yeah it's a, it's a different uh, it's a different lifestyle for sure and you really you end up spending so much time with the people that you're with you also really it, it, bec- it changes the dynamic 
of a band once you start touring because you really start to realize that you you need to have a couple people like not everyone has the same relationship with everyone else so relationships really develop inside of that traveling party within the band members within the crew also of like who can i go to to vent when i need to who do i you know who do i need to get away from some of the time like who you know and um so i mean that kind of weeds itself out as you <laughs> fall from grace <laughs> because we went like our our arch was like starting even though our first tours were in a van we were still starting with crew members and and all this and um and then by the time we you know we're in a bus where you know we have a, a bunch of crew and and people taking care of stuff for us and everything and then back kind of to basics with um doing it like i mean the next tour that we did the first tour that we did when uh the second record came out it, it was literally just us in the band yep. there was no crew members at all so it was like all of us just had to figure out who's taking care of what mm. um with driving with you know navigation because we're doing this before there's smartphones too yeah, we were trying to print out all Map the maps Quest. on map yeah. before we would leave and shit you know like to cover the entire country you yeah know? <laughs> so like figuring out that kind of stuff beforehand who's collecting the money from from the venues at the end of the night yeah. like you know just literally like every single part of it um it, it really changes like who's you know, the driver though who's the main driver we the two of us drove the most i think mm -hmm. we like johnny probably drove the most out of everyone but at, at, on the tours that got like really extended we tried to make a a schedule so that we could say you know so that people could have time off and mm -hmm. time to rest and everything and and so we do a rotating schedule we'd we'd have jonathan drive the least <laughs> he was the and last not not at night he wasn't allowed to drive yeah. at night because he has no depth perception yeah they're about to they're about to touch up right now okay cool Let's take a quick break, and then uh, we'll come back and All continue right. from here. Yeah. Let's go watch Bo Nichols destroy somebody. <laughs> <laughs> 